on this beautiful Sunday night, we are coming to you live from our Nile Serena studios. This is Perspective with Josephine Karunji. Program. We're coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Conference Center, Nile Room. And tonight we'll be talking about formal education versus a child's skills and passion. Um, Formal education versus an individual's inborn talent. Now, must the two be separated? If a child has, ex has failed to excel in school, is there a place for them in the world, or are they going to be thrown out and labeled misfits and failures? So we spoke to a mother earlier in the week, and she was so concerned with ensuring that her children, uh, her children's creative abilities were not thrown out by the world because of the way the formal education has been structured. Uh, so she opted to homeschool them. She shared her story with Tracy, uh, who shared it with us. Let's take a look at that clip. Rita Egonda quit her job to focus on raising her children. She hated the system of moving children from one classroom to the other. Because in some schools, children are grouped according to their performance in class. She hated the competitiveness that schools find rewarding. Children are taught to compete from baby class. I mean... You find t-shirts with academic giants, baby class, an academic giant. Then the one that has not got it feels like they are not worth. And then the academic giants are beginning to be tuned and built to a mentality of if I'm great, I'll be great, then I'll make the money. If I'm low, then I may end up as a maid. Like I told you, we kind of make certain duties and jobs better than the others. From way back, you find little kids discussing how they are going to, to fly planes because that is what is great. And then they are saying, I can't stay back and be a housemaid like our maid who earns very little. And yet those are all great things, people contributing to society. So foundation matters. I train the children at an early age to value everything as important. Rita now uses the accelerated Christian education system to educate her children. They do not study past 1 p.m. Each of the children have their own time of study. She handles each of them according to their interests and potential. So ACE was the thing that worked for me. Of course the challenges are there. Number one, it is a home setting. And everybody will think, will they feel like it's cool? I had to be intentional. When it's cool, it is cool. I had to first let them know that school is good for us. When anybody knows the value of what they are doing, then they will be committed to it. I had to begin by disciplining myself. Any leader has to begin by disciplining themselves if they are to lead anybody. Nobody pushes me. I have to push myself. And I knew that the best learning method for children was not talk, 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 but action. So however hard it was, I had to create an environment that separates home from school within the same home. However, all the children are taught basic home skills. Right now my daughter loves cooking. Every one of my children cooks. And mm. I keep thinking, that's like mommy. And I like it when they do it because then they don't put it down. They go into a restaurant and thank the chefs with joy because they know where food comes from. Mm. And they know it takes brains to actually cook <laughs> because you have to know about food groups yeah, and yeah. things to do with food and how to measure. That is math. That is everything. It's educational. Mm -hmm. So I make them know that it is not daft people that end up into cooking. Yeah. You have to be intelligent to cook. They all have things they love to do. I design websites and apps and also back-end designs. Uh, it originally started when I, I really liked games and I wanted to design my own. As I got further into programming, I figured about all the other cool stuff and then I proceeded with that. I want to become a dancer and a musician, mm -hmm. but I also want to study math. I want to be an entrepreneur and a businessman. No, not go. You hear me? You hear me? Rita did not always believe in the homeschooling system. The first time her son said he wanted to be a rapper, she shut him down. Please don't try to pretend like you be real though. It's funny that you got a lot of money, but the money doesn't buy skill though. I don't care if I'm on the billboards, on the kill spree, I'm to kill him all. He knew all I wanted was something that was holistic. Are you just going to do rap or you're going to study? 
So I was asking them about who their heroes were, who they look to. And he told me, NF. And I said, who is he? And he said, he's a rapper. And I said, uh-huh, what else? Then he said, he is a graduate, mommy. <laughs> he graduated in business. <laughs> and he's a businessman. And he's excellent at business. And then he also raps. And he's worth this. And he makes the money. And you know, mommy, I want to do business. And I want to be rich. And rapping is the way to go. But I'm going to graduate. And that was the last day I had any negativity about his passion. So I let him download different songs. I let him practice before me. I let him rap when we have an opportunity to do so before people. I let him do his thing. Actually, I've been trying to look out for somebody that can train rapping professionally. It is not an area that many people want to do. Mm. At church, he has somebody that helps him a bit. Her eldest son, age 13, is now a website designer. He is an artist and he develops applications. He loves everything to do with the computer. She was careful with her choice of a homeschool system. I had seen how our generation has become reined. I'm a bit of traditional, as brought up by traditional parents yeah. that believed in kneeling and greeting and mm. leaving a seat for, for parents or elder people. Mm. And I thought I loved that. And I saw it getting out of our society slowly. And I knew the only way I could instill this was by building children that loved the Lord, walked by biblical principles. And I thought I wasn't going to get it from anybody other than myself getting home and teaching my children. That was my major aim. However, it's not lost on Rita that minds change and hearts are swayed. So if any of her children changes their mind on the things they love at the moment, she is ready to adopt. They can do anything. If they want to do football, parents will let them go and do football. If they want to do IT, they will go and do IT. My daughter wants to dance. If she's just nine, I don't know if by 16 she'll still be wanting to dance. But if that is it, Fine, I'll get a school that does professional dance and she'll do it. So I was, I was watching the, the studio audience while the clip was playing and when the professional rapper came on, everybody was like, so a lot of you wanted to be professional rappers <laughs> and they just never gave you the opportunity. So my guests for tonight, um, I'll start with Agatha, Mrs. Kisacha, who is right next to me. She's a child protection consultant, parenting coach and child mentor. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. All right. Dr. Lawrence Muganga, who is an educational author. Welcome. Thank you, Josephine. And finally, Mr. Ismail Mulindwa, who is the Acting Director, Basic and Secondary Education at the Ministry of Education. Welcome to the show. Welcome, Josephine. Yeah. So, you're watching the clip. What are you thinking? <laughs> She's doing the right thing. She's doing the right thing. Yes. We should all go homeschooling. Uh, a, a few days ago, I think I talked about uh, how uh, the education system as is, is not for everyone. Uh, there should be as many paths path to take as possible, right? So, and uh, looking at uh, the system we have right now, when you look at uh, what is provided uh, in school, I, I talked about this uh, so many times I said that uh, what, does, what, what do you expect students to learn there? If it is, say, uh, elementary or primary school, you expect them to learn um, math, math, English, English science, and, SST. and SST, right? Which would eventually graduate and branch off into so many other subjects. But we know that that is purely academics, right? Uh, I think there is uh, one, um, uh, one of the leading uh, lead thinkers in education, Sarkin uh, Robinson, right? He says that all these subjects can only be needed if one wants to become a, a typical academician. Because 99% of what we get out of it, we don't need it in the normal occupations that we need. That we do, yeah. Right? But keeping your education as an all-rounder, right now, they don't know, she, she put it very clearly that I don't know if my daughter would want to dance when she turns this age. They keep, things keep changing. Yeah. Now, if you constrain them to dancing, towards the age of 17, what are you doing to this kid? Okay. 
Mr. Munindra. Okay. Thank you, Josephine. Uh, that clip was exciting, but I want to say, as the Minister of Education, it's our mandate. And I want to start by saying there is no useless person in this world. True. Every individual is uh, gifted in his or her uh, own right. So once we get to know that, then we need to really come up with a uh, kind of strategies to see that we tap into these many talents in the, in the, 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 the very different individuals. But I said, uh, Josephine, I want to say, in terms of policy, the ministry is okay. All this, what we are talking about, uh, identifying talent, nurturing talent, is provided for in the policy. Where we seem to have a challenge is when it comes to implementation. Do we implement it to the dot so that that individual, that young one, can really be useful in this world? We can be able to identify it and be able to get that talent, that, that, that inborn ability in that individual child. But uh, Jonathan, you need to appreciate, look at the kind of setting this uh, parent is, is trying to nurture the, 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 the talent. It will tell you at this material time it may be quite challenging for our education system. Much as it's provided for in our policy, look at the 1992 education policy. It, it clearly provided for this. Mm -hmm. When you look at uh, the thematic curriculum, some of you are mentioning uh, English, mathematics, uh, SST, and science. But in the thematic curriculum, we have the capes, the creative arts. Mm. And these were meant to identify that, uh, uh, that talent in that, very, that, uh, that individual. But when you look at our classroom setting, 60, it would be a bit challenging really to go and uh, be able to identify talent in every individual. Okay. But, but that said, I think the ministry is uh, really uh, trying to go that way. When you look at the, the, the reviews now we are having, and we have very many things we are doing as a ministry. Uh, if I remember for from, from my primary school, I think the extra curricular activities we had was PE. We had a baking or t baking mm. class, actually, and knitting. Yes. I, I don't suppose any of those was my strongest point. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not sure that it shaped me in any way in, in, in getting into that direction. But I'm curious to know what you think, uh, Mrs. Chisacha. <coughs> um, I think that every child is gifted. And I think that every child has their own learning needs. Mm -hmm. that's, I think that's the part that's missing the most. Are we able to understand a child's learning needs? What if I learn slowly? What if I am too fast? Being able to, to bring all those learning needs together and, and handling and children and subjecting mm -hmm. them to the same examination with that in mind is, is quite a task. I appreciate what Rita is doing because she's able to deal with every individual child and you see every one of our individual children is coming out because they've been given the space and a room to grow who they are. I homeschool myself, but that's one of the benefits I have received from homeschooling. I'm able to provide time. You see, she does her class up to one. We also do class up to two. And after that, the children will do their projects. We will, we will go into who this child is, what is their niche, what, as a parent, what do I see in my child? The trouble is we are not seeing the things, those gifts. Parents don't know ch their children are gifted. As long as my child has gone to school, eight to five, and I go for, uh, collect them from school, that is it. But and they do coaching in the holidays. And they do coaching in the holiday. But what is my learning need? Or, or even then, who am I? Who am I? Have you taken care of me? I am going to school and doing the math and the English and the SST, but are you taking care of me? Do you know me? You know, my, 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 my daughter was a bit, uh, a, a little bit slow. And I thought, oh, okay, she's not so. But the m when I sat down to understand my daughter and to help her through school, I found an amazing child. She's brilliant, but she'll move at her pace. And that's how I handle her. So when we are scheduling school, we schedule knowing she will be a little slower, but she's brilliant. But she I have found out so many gifts in her that now we are doing something about. Okay. And today she's a fashion designer at seven years. She designs herself, she makes her jewelry, 
I'm looking at her in the audience and I see yeah, the jewelry on, on made up herself. That's on her. <laughs> I wish the camera would so get to in her my so house, we could look at In my house, I'm earrings. raising a fashion designer. In my house, I, I, you know, we will go through <laughs> school, but I am very sure right now I am raising a fashion designer. So I do everything possible to take her in that line. In the direction. Would you say our current system uh, mostly gives room to academic excellence as opposed to nurturing people's gifts? And here's an ex a thought from me that, so you go to class from 8 a.m. up to about 5 p.m. or 3 p.m., okay, let's say, give or take, 3 to 5. And then you go home, and when you get home, you have homework, right? And in the holidays, when you should be maybe taking a course in something, in cooking or baking or knitting, you are or doing football practice or something, you have coaching. Mm. Uh, there's something funny uh, with the even how we call these things. Like some of the things have been uh, tagged to be called extracurricular activities, meaning there are some core ones that they are untouchables. Before you do ev ev anything else, you have to do this, right? So uh, I, I really appreciate what, what you're doing. Uh, some of us, we are really failing to understand that all p kids, children, have different natural abilities. My question again, Dr. Mukanga, yeah. would you say our current system mostly gives room to academic excellence as opposed to? Of course. Okay. Uh, of course, that, uh, starting with that name, thinking uh, where, where, where we say that people are doing extracurricular activities. So, meaning uh, everything must be academic first. There is no path for uh, if you are not passionate about academic discipline or subjects, that, that is not your pa passion, then you don't have elsewhere to go. You, you are confined in there. Same what Agatha was saying, that you were telling me to study SST, you're asking me to study geography, but wh how about me? What I want? Right, so that, that, that's what we are asking the, the education system, uh, like the Minister of Education, to really like uh, he put it very clear and very. Uh, he said it's all there; it's just at yeah. implementation level. Exactly, that's a, that's a huge problem. Mm -hmm. uh, who, who is who is supposed to implement? Like we said, everyone is endowed with a particular gift, right? But. We have to have structures, systems, support. There are people who are not, uh, like their parents who have no education to even identify one's need. But we have schools, systems that help us to really extract that person that is in me. There is. Right. Uh, uh, j just yeah. before you give that yeah. example, I, yeah. I need for us to take a quick break mm. and we'll continue from there when we come back. Yeah. Great. that have been coming in is that um, you're glossing over things like a typical politician. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> Maybe you'd want to, <laughs> uh, <laughs> to help us out there. I don't want to be a politician. Mm. I'm just putting facts out there. Mm. Uh, because when I say in terms of policy we are doing well, that's for a fact. Mm. And uh, I quickly turn around and say we, we have a challenge when it comes to implementation. And that's why I referred you to even the setting of the parent we have just seen. Yeah. Uh, we have so many who want to have that basic education. First of all, basic education. When it comes to identifying a talent and that gift in that one child, it's really a task. You, don't in, you, can't ide you cannot be able, it's challenging for you to identify in a 60 plus classroom. Mm -hmm. That's why I made reference to that one. Yeah. So this is a combined effort. There are quite a number of stakeholders, including even the parents. We're, we're going to, parents we're going to come to the parent, but my question is, when, when we constantly say the problem is with the implementers, yeah. who oversees the implementers? It's we Besides the parents, but the, the ones in your structure, the education ministry. Yes, yeah, we were supposed to. So what's happening the there? And the really we are trying within the means, within the available means. I've already mentioned it, our children in primary are being taught 
uh, those many uh, services we have mm -hmm. mentioned. But on top of this, they're supposed to be taught cafes, and they are taught these subjects, which are meant to identify talent or the gifts within those uh, small kids. So we are doing what we can within the what? The within means. the means. And many of our schools, by the way, we need to be uh, maybe informed of this, mm. are trying to scout. They are trying to scout. They are trying to try to, 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 to identify the talents from, the, 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 the talents from these uh, students. When you visit many of the schools, you mentioned the swimming pools, you mentioned the what, in terms of sports. The many people we have now, the sportsmen, the dancers, are coming from schools, meaning that these students have been identified at that level and they have been nurtured to have the many people now we are having. The, the musicians, the word will tell you, I went to, to Makere Mdidi. We what? actually had hoped to have a musician on the show today and uh, his story was that he went to school but he was asked and forced to study a particular subject. So he studied it, handed the degree to his parents and said, here is your degree, now let me go and do what I've always wanted yes. to do, that the school system never gave me a chance mm. to do. Karungi, things are changing. In the past, you would not even mention music or drama. People would yeah. take you for, like, uh, you are a wasted kind of. But now, people have started to appreciate. Because many of our schools have got pro these programs. We know for a fact some of the schools which are excelling in the music. And some parents now can even take their children in those schools. We have schools of excellence. Schools of ex excelling in sports. And you have now you have. I, mean, I will give one example. If you wanted your child or your boy, I mean, a second level to become a good footballer, and what, don't you need school where you can take this? You have children. We yeah. have yeah. We have other schools which are specialising in identifying these talents. Yeah, but, but Dr. Mr. yeah, but Mr. Uh, uh, Ismail, right? <coughs> Is there a government policy that can help parents? to even those who are not really aware of what is going on. To the way we enforce that everyone to finish, to go to this level must complete SST, uh, math, English, and science. Mm -hmm. Could we have a mainstream policy that, uh, how we, we have this saying that no child left behind, you know those? Yeah. Can we have another policy of no gift left behind? Every gift must be nurtured uh, in a school setting or support parents to have this uh, ho homeschooling to happen, right? I happen, like, as parents who get chal challenges, myself, I have uh, kids that are uh, uh, three of them, for example, uh, not only three, I have more than three, but three of them. <laughs> they, 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 they challenge me. I have a little, little, a little daughter, Avia, four years old, loves drawing. Everything of hers is to draw, right? So then, but the school system is not providing that most of it, being even a developed country. But, we, but, but as a parent, you said, like you do the advocacy, start talking to uh, teachers and everything to allow that. Then I have another one who everything she thinks is music, singing, like even if she's revising, she has uh, headphones. And has, how do you read when you're listening to music? But I realized. That is who she is, yeah. and you just have to support this person. But could we have a school system here mm -hmm. that people don't have to really figure it out by themselves? It is inbuilt within the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, we have a policy, a yes. personal policy. And I said it provides for this. But implementation. Uh, yeah, but uh, with the time, you know, some of these things are cultural. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the question has to be reviewed even after, even after several years. So when we get, uh, that's why I brought in the, the, the issue of parents. Right. They need to know what they want for their children and then make a case and put it to the government to make sure that they revise the word. The how, how are the parents so going to do that? No, like, uh, like uh, our colleague doing, is doing here. So that's it's so to say that every parent should homeschool their children no, so the government can realize that. that. Eh? But show, show case. Okay. Mm. And that's the case for us to pick. Right, so let's talk about the role of parents because we know that a lot of times parents are the ones who are putting, stifling their own children's creativity. I'm a doctor so my child has to be a doctor or has to study sciences or has to follow in my footsteps. So their, their decision making on behalf of their sure. children is killing it. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, in fact, you are very right. Eh? Mm. So if you look at the ministry, 
and you think the minister is going to fix everything, then we are losing a point. It says at home, what do you want your child to be? The pressures which you come to be, from. Or what does your child want to be? Yes. No, what, uh, what does your child want wants to be? Okay. That's, that should be the point. Eh? Okay. But then, when you identify what your child wants to be, like that one was already mentioned, I want to be a, a, a dancer. A dancer. Yeah. Then you promote, you promote your child. There are schools here which can help you nurture that kind, that kind of what? That kind of talent. But when you put pressure to the ministry and you say, I want my child to score for, to get a four, and you're obsessed with a four, like many of our parents are, then we have a problem. That's why I said we have many stakeholders in this. It's not simply a ministry of education, mm -hmm. but even the parent okay. uh, is also a key stakeholder to determine what the child uh, wants to, to be. Agatha, what, what should a parent's role be in helping shaping and, and helping their child achieve their goals? Thank you. Let me begin with a quote from a man called Albert Einstein. He says that every child is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, that fish will spend its whole life thinking, thinking that it is it's stupid. stupid. That's my book. I have come to a place <laughs> when I know that every child is different. Every child is unique. It's me, the parent, I have the God-given mandate to know who my child is and to be able to support them in that line. My son is a gifted child, but when he was in other places and school, he was a bit of a, a trouble to the, to the teachers. He's so fast, he moves here and there and all of that, and he talks too much and he wants to be everywhere. But when I took my God-given mandate as a parent to understand my son, two times into homeschooling, he started writing books, and last year he published his first book. What is the book called? The Talking Beep. He's, he's, he's motivated by, by humor. He wants children to love to read and, and laugh. How old is he? He's nine. He's here. Um, the Talking Beep. Isn't it past bedtime for the children to be here? We will deal with that. <laughs> no, for us, we are very flexible. Okay. We are very flexible people. But you see, it's, it's, it's me as a parent to identify that thing in my child and give it space to grow. If we don't do that, then the world will parent for us if we cannot parent our own children. I know we are busy. I know we, are, we, 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 we have stuff to do. But take care of of what you see in your children. Grow it because later this is where the, the, their success will come from. Yeah. I'm a Christian. The Bible tells me in, 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 in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16, that a man's gift makes room for him and sits him before great men. Not a man's family, not his background, not his, his faith, not his friends, not nothing. A man's gift makes room for him. If we don't grow the gifts we see in our children today, there are some rooms that are, they are not going to reach. They, okay. are, they are great people they are not going to meet. All right. But I want, I want your child to meet people because he's a great footballer, not because he went to, Namag to <laughs> which schools? <laughs> I want your child, Queen Abenacho has met the world. Who knows where she went to school? Who knows how, what she scored in which grade and what level? All we know is that she's a supermodel okay. and she, she, she's beautiful and she's using that to to capture the world. Okay. And for me, that's what I want every parent to do. All right, Look uh, out for what is good in your child and grow it. Let's quickly hear from, from the audience, um, particularly, I don't know who's holding the microphone. If whoever has it could just ask their question. And if nobody's holding it, then we can continue with the conversation up here. Yes. Yes, I'm called Fikiriza Moses Rwangira. I'm a teacher. From I don't want to question, but I'm commenting and advising. I want to advise all the parents and the ministry to find out where the children are interested and talented in. Instead of them to continue with education when they are not even interested in education. Because it's not all about what you want, but also what you can manage. And not only what you can manage, but what you love. We have seen people who are forced to go continue with education when they are talented in music. After education and graduating, they don't even go for work in the career that they pursued, but they just divert to music. Because emotions, love, and ambitions can't be corrupted. Even if you force someone to do a certain course, he, he or she is going to do it because you have forced that person. 
but the ambition in him, the love for music, for football, for film industry, or any other thing that he or she loves, will remain in it, in that person. So parents are supposed to first identify what their children can love or what they love first. Then after knowing what they love, go ahead to know whether they can manage what they love. All right. Because you have seen people who love certain things, but they are not talented there. Okay. People have tried the music, they love it, but they are not talented in the music. In music. Or am, I, am I going to uh, allow you to continue telling us, but let's take a break while you tell us a bit more about... Um, okay, okay. Yes. Let's take a short break. Welcome back. We are coming to you from the Kampala, live from the Kampala Serena Conference Center, Nile Room. I want to take one more question from the audience or comment, but question, okay, let's go. <coughs> my name is Abo Gordon, and I'm a practicing accountant from Cham University in my final year. Uh, uh, to, like, m most of you are trying to agitate it on a point that, that parents should first know what their uh, children are interested in. But you people, you are gifted that, that uh, your children are being born by p people who are going to school. But do you know that there is someone who is in the village whose parent never went to school? So if, like, some people in the village who, some parents who are not educated, if she or he tries to, uh, to, to, to ask the child, what do you want to be? And the child is, uh, says, maybe I want to be a musician. Some parents think musician is a uh, yai. You know? Okay. You know? All right. <laughs> I, I think Mr. Mlindu had hinted at that. Yeah. From back in the day. Right. Some parents cannot be able to identify the tent in their children. So, yeah. It's, so it's let, let's let him answer so, your question. So, so it comes back now to us as ministry mm. and with our teachers to be able to identify this talent and help that uh, parent who cannot uh, do it for himself. Okay. So our teachers are doing exactly that. However, they need also are they, they need exactly they need that? also they need also some bit of training. Okay. to be able to identify the tenants and the, uh, the gifted children, which, which, which they seem to be doing within the means. Within, I, 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 I would like us to stick to the point that you said that, that the problem is at implementation, sure. because there really is a problem, mm -hmm. and we cannot run away from it or, or smoothen it and polish it up with something. Mm -hmm. Somebody asks for the people who are into homeschooling, how do you prepare homeschool children to compete with peers at, say, the university level? Thank you, Josephine. We don't teach children to compete. Mm -hmm. We teach children to be so good at what they do that when they, they are out there in the world, they will excel. Okay, that's it. Okay, and to compete for jobs, compete in quotes. My, my, my son is already working. My daughter is already working. So we are, not, we are not studying to get jobs. We are already working, but when we are out there, I want her to be an outstanding fashion designer, just like everyone. I want my, my, my son to be one of the best authors, but not to be to to beat whoever and whoever. I just want him to be so good at what he does that there will not be on any option but to recognize him. Another question: Formal education still gives the best guarantee for professional success. Are we talking about putting it aside, Doctor yeah, Muganga? Uh, th th that's a very good question, but of also so much premise to the past traditional mm -hmm. way of looking at education. Mm -hmm. So, I if you look at what is happening today. Right, the, the world has changed. So, d what Agatha is saying is that uh, w they are giving their children an experience, not not to compete, but an experience. In one way, she's saying that by the time they go out to the labor market, they have an edge com uh, compared to anyone who is going through school right now. So, we are not saying put aside formal education. No. We're saying supplement it. We are saying formal education, transform formal education tweak it to accept gifted kids that they are there, that they are actually yearning to get out there, okay. right? Like the gentleman asked a very good question. Actually, such parents are the majority in this country, right? And now that, that brings us back to, if they are the majority, then po a policy is generated because there is always huge need Demand. to address a particular problem. There is a huge need for that, right? We know research has shown us that actually, a majority of A students are employed by C students, and B students work for government. Okay. Right? And uh, yes, yeah. we quite do away with the formal education because it is what it's doing is try to help you identify and nurture. If you don't have that formal education, 
it may be very difficult for you even to nurture it the gives talent. You a best. Like yeah. like the the, the, the the lady who was talking here, huh? Eh? seems to have gone to school, he knows what he's uh, doing, so he can be able now to identify a tent in his ch child and be able to nurture it. That's why he raised uh, an issue, said some of our parents in the rural areas, or those who have never gone to school, it becomes a bit tricky for them to know my child is, uh, his line may be this. So form education, you can't do away with the form education. And yeah, form education, but, uh, this one cannot, the informal cannot substitute. Yeah, but Josephine, Josephine uh, yes. and the audience, I want us uh, to really draw a distinction between schooling and education. So what we are talking about as so-called form education, to, it has transformed itself into schooling. W and what is schooling? What happens there is instruction, mm -hmm. right? Not facilitating, nurturing, extracting mm -hmm. that natural person who sits in every other child Mm -hmm. Right, like I told you about my child, who uh, who uh, Avia, who yearns to be an artist, Lauren, who yearns to be a musician, Melissa, who yearns to be an academic, and you have to understand that and, uh, and nurture them according to that. Yes. Right. Yeah. I was looking, and I've just found it. Um, somebody sent in earlier this week on, on my social media pages. I'd asked about. Um, this particular topic and they sent me uh, sort of like a poster uh, Uganda Community Polytechnic Certificate Programs after right. primary living examinations and some of the things they offer it's a three year I don't know if it's a course or a, you know mm. but it's government sponsored vocational programs they, ha they offer motor vehicle mechanics wielding and metal fabrication block laying and concrete practice electrical installation practice plumbing and pipe fitting and a lot of other things they're over 16 um, courses here, mm. leather work and shoe making, food preparation and processing. Is this the way to go? Is this an option? I know you had some reservations about it. Mm -hmm. This is right after PLE. Right after PLE, this is still a child. I think some of, some of th that, that approach, it's, so, it's good. It bridges the gap. It provides an option. But I feel that it's a bit, t a little advanced. A child still needs to be a child. You know, they still to need to go through you know, the, their childhood, you know, to, to, to have a, a, a life that allows them to be a child. So I appreciate the effort. But also, I will take my son there if that is their thing. If, if I've realized my son is uh, But I suspect that this is for people who have identified who have that this, not who have failed, mm. but people who have probably identified. Yeah. And yes. only that we look at them as the system, you know, yeah, so far I makes us look at them as though they've failed. Secondary mm. education? So it's supposed to be three years, and mm -hmm. you get a, a, certificate, a certificate at the certificate. end that is mm. equivalent to your UCE, UCE, UCE mm -hmm. certificate. Yeah, I, I think I appreciate the the, the, the effort. The effort. I, I, th I honestly think that's the way to go. It, it's providing an option to the current uh, system of education that we have. A thirteen-year-old is not too young, as we may want to uh, think, because I've seen actually a thirteen-year-old who has finished college, right? those prodigal kids who are really born gifted. Uh, one of them is now almost uh, enrolling for PhD at, at 14, right? So there are those ones now at, at, 40, at, at 14, 13, you begin to see w what these kids are pre preoccupying themselves with. So I am really happy that the, the government of Uganda is beginning to actually come up with those community polyte polytechnics so that yeah. now a parent doesn't have to think, oh, you have to go this academic stream. You go this path, it gives you the certification. Okay. Right. So somebody sends a comment and says the German system puts emphasis on directing those in it through early apprenticeship programs. Mm. The idea of early exposure to apprenticeships, it seems to me, is worth incorporating into what we have. Mm. Right. Apprenticeships, yes. yeah. mentors. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's great, and uh, my friends worry that she at that yeah. age the yeah. kid is too young. No, this may be. It may not push that kid into the formal uh, employment, but it may prepare that uh, kid to go for further for further education. And I think that's a, a good idea. There are many countries, and I wish to also to make an appeal our people, to our parents, eh, to change the mindset. Mm. Yeah. Right. Because again, when uh, these opportunities are provided, people will take there, those who have totally failed. Y you can choose even to take somebody who has scored a what? The first grade, why not? 
Okay. Yeah. Um, another comment from uh, Romeo Joseph Muchiza is he says, so what happens to parents who cannot afford international schools? Because the perception is that when you go to international schools is where you'll find these activities mm. that would otherwise help you bring out your creative side. No. I, yeah. I guess again it comes back to you that people yeah. do not think that the government Mindset. schools, UP schools, yeah. are giving that opportunity. Yeah, yeah I agree. We are, we are not doing enough eh, to the expectations of the, what, of the parents. Eh? But I think, uh, like I keep again repeating this one, within the means, I think we have tried to, to provide what uh, the parents can really build on. We not every. We should say we need to do more. Yeah, we need to do more. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Uh, we don't need really to say international schools. How many can afford international schools? Yeah. I, I so guess what we can do question. for now, what, what do we can do for now, is to make sure that we provide what the parents need within our our schools, and we are doing that. I want to give you examples. We have science fairs. We have uh, sports competitions. We have drama. We have what? All these are meant to to identify the talent and be able to nurture it as a ministry. Those are our programs, science fairs, talk of science fairs, talk of drama competitions, okay. talk of sports. Okay. And we have gotten, very, by the way, very big people, names of, uh, in sports through Previous. that kind of uh, One more comment before I ask you to make your closing remarks. Um, Jen says, in Switzerland, the state mandates all homeschooled children to take a test every year that assesses them against their peers in formal education so that they do not get left behind. Do we have anything of the sort? So the kids who are homeschooled now, how do they know that at any point, you know, is, is there anything? And not as yet. You know, our system is uh, obsessed with the certification. Mm. So for you to, even if you push your child to O level, it will be a bit tricky for you to now jump P7 and go to senior one and sit an exam. I don't think you train th the parents who have chosen to train them. So this is something we should think right. about. This is something we should uh, think I about. I also know that um, at, at grade 12, when a child is able to uh, finish in S6, uh, uh, the SCE curriculum has been well aligned to, to the government curriculum. They, they, they have been equated by the National Curriculum Development Center. So when a child finishes grade 12, they are suitable to go to university. And they are allowed with just that document without yes. the POE certificate? Yes, it has been well, well thought through, well looked through, well looked at, and it has been found fit and, and suitable. But, All right. uh, but, but honest, uh, uh, Josephine, uh, uh, comparing the two uh, panelists' ideas, uh, personally, uh, I don't even see the importance of gra those gradings, like senior for uh, results or primary results. Those are not even supposed to be there. Uh, <laughs> no, they, they, no, they are not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you, what are you grading? And you're grading, okay, you're grading them to do what, right? Just teach them to know how to do things mm -hmm. that they are passionate about. Mm -hmm. And then move them over to a stage where they have some experience to work with when they actually needed in the economy to provide what they are supposed to provide to their economy. Mm -hmm. The experience you give them, I would love to see uh, parents. Uh, you put it that uh, when someone starts to sing, you think is a muyai. And these are your closing remarks? Yes. Uh, I would like, like to see parents to encourage them, please, please, this education system we have today, it has its own ills, its own problems, that it needs fixing like um, how many years ago, right? If your kid shows you that they are passionate about this, find means of supporting them that way before the education system catches up. If it catches up, well and good. If it doesn't, maybe you have tried. Right. Thank you. Mr. Mm. Thank you, Josephine. I want to say our current education system is being reviewed. It's an opportunity for the many stakeholders now to bring these ideas. How so do they bring these ideas? No, they, oh, because they all of them are on Facebook and Twitter and mm. we are making noise there. Yes. How do we get the ideas out there? No, you can submit your proposals to, to the ministry and they can be really considered. And such kind of fora, we are not coming here just for the sake of being on TV or what. We are picking ideas here. So we are in the review and I hope the many 
issues which have been raised here, like identifying talent, doing what, nurturing and what, at uh, an age, all these issues can be addressed in our, because the concern and the reason why we are reviewing our curriculum is so, so our education system is just looking at academic uh, pathway. We have many pathways, but we don't need to really, we, we are not putting much emphasis on this. So we are now reviewing to make our education a bit practical so that uh, we, 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 we are not obsessed with the distinctions in the chemistry and what. You, okay, we are getting a distinction in chemistry, but can you get to, uh, to do something practical that will be helpful to you? I, I, was, I was having a conversation with somebody who uh, did their UCE recently. Mm. Of course, we know parents have been broken by these results. You expect your child to get four, they don't get four. The child is broken, the parent is broken. But somebody I know got a, a three in math, and he's been really good at math the whole of his life. So he's decided they won't give me math. Now I'm not going to do math. Let me figure something else out. But he wants to do math-related things. But the system traps him in this place that yeah. says, if you don't get a one in math, you're dropping it, and your life is... Basically, your life is over. No, that's one school. Uh, but uh, why is it that uh, somebody scoring a three cannot do math, even if you got a six? Mm. Have an even examples <laughs> where somebody, <laughs> yes, somebody <laughs> scored right. a six, and at the end of the day, at senior six, what he gets a B. All right. Yeah. But th the school system is, is shaping it in such a way that... That you look a failure. Yes, you mm. look a failure. And so people's mindsets are now, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, I'm qu maybe I was wrong that I'm actually good at math. You know, you that question that yourself. No, you just need I'll to know uh, which school you are, no, fit to go to, what and what then go and do your math. Right. I would like uh, <laughs> Agatha to close, and then we'll, we'll to give yeah. her closing remarks. Well, I think for me, it, this all comes back to the parent. We, we have the primary responsibility to nurture our children, to see the gifts in them and grow them. For me, parenting cannot be delegated, and it cannot be postponed. We have to parent now. So every parent, just take up uh, your responsibility. Identify things in your children. And they don't have to be these huge things. You see, there are indicators in every child. Mm -hmm. God has graciously given us indicators, but we are not seeing. And please don't compare your children, especially negatively. Right. Don't compare children. Just see what is good in them and grow it because every child is gifted and every child has a seed of greatness that we just have to get and grow. Right. Thank yeah. you so much, all of you, for coming for the show and for uh, sharing those insights with us. And thank you to our studio audience that has participated um, in this show. Well, that's it for our show for tonight. Coming up is NTV Weekend Edition with Sandra Trinobudio.